My name is Hunts the Storm. For over 100 years, I've pursued the snake that consumes itself, which manifests as a massive storm, able to rip people like myself and my companions, Mohawk and Mohawk, from our realities. This time I caught the storm and it opened up for me and inside I found strange people. These people call the snake that consumes itself a time machine. They have traveled back to my time to stop a great evil. This mega timeline still imprisons my sister Tan and my family, the Croatan people. We will not stop until we see it defeated. And now I find myself in an alliance with these powerful fools. Hannah is a life and spirit shaman. They are like my people, but strange and twisted. Ethel is a witch who specializes in destruction and death. She means well, but is reckless with the power that she wields. Another, Mona, seems to control reality and be an instrument of some divine will. She is unwavering and loyal, but I question what ends her purpose serves. Parallax is a chronomancer who weaves space, time, and fate. He is devoted to his loved ones, but seems callous to the needs of others. For those who meddle with the forces of time itself, they are very short-sighted. That has not stopped them from saving many lives. And this time ship is filled with those who have become their family. Together, we can answer the spirit's call and right the wrongs of this and all reality. And here is the first exciting thing. Everybody roll a single D10. Seven. Ah, uh, ten. Ooh. Do I roll again? Uh, yeah, you roll again and you add it. Ish, what'd you get? Two. Two. Well, that still beats Charlotte's one. And uh, Victoria. I hope hey, we're not also- rolling initiative. Sorry. I also rolled a 10. You also rolled a 10. And when you rolled it again, what'd you get? I got a four. Hmm. I got 16 in total. All right. Well, Katie, you get to pick first. Uh, I have discovered a new superpower. So, where would you like to be? Hmm. <gasps> Whoa. That's just made by that was like flashes of like different realities that was making my brain hurt um I apologize (laughs) sometimes um, that happens in the fact this place is fine (laughs) okay um great well Victoria where would you like to be Out of like anywhere in the world or anywhere like anywhere on the screen. <laughs> yeah, Rudy's moving us around. Except you can't take Katie's spot. Wait, what are we looking at? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh do you have a fav- would you like to be in the middle, on the left or the right? What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at all of our faces. I'm looking at your cat face. <laughs> Oh, on the screen in that way. That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. The uh, middle. Middle. Trevor. Uh, bottom right, I guess. That is where you are at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> uh, so I guess that means that Ish, would you like to switch with Charlotte, and we'll have purple on either side? Or stay where you are. Or stay where you are. 
All right, well, that was the whole thing. <laughs> the world shifted, changed, contorted. You followed Alora outside of Titania's castle and into the realm of the Fae. I have asked you to stand by with a deck of tarot cards. And Victoria, would you pull one of those tarot cards now? Yep. Am I pulling from just the major arcana or from the whole deck? Um, I'm going to say that's up to you. Okay. I haven't separated it out, so we're going to say the whole deck. All right. Perhaps that is fate. I have the Eight of Pentacles. So, as you rush outwards, you find that you are running through Titania's massive treasure chamber. She's got a number of servants here, and Alora is guiding you. As you are running through the treasure chamber, you see that waiting by a doorway, a massive metal frame set into a wooden wall that makes up the edge of Titania's Fey castle. By that door, there are three figures waiting. And those three figures are, oh no, a fourth. Who is this stranger? It's the rest of the characters that we saw in our previous session. So Allura is here now and Buff, but all of them have gained a little bit through their experience in the Fey. They've all gained a point of experience, in fact, and they also have some new character quirk. And we're gonna start with Byron. So Trevor, playing both Parallax and Byron now. What, uh, what has happened to Byron in the Fey? Wow. So, if I recall correctly, Byron did have a physical form since the last time we met. Yes, he did. So, but he, does he still? He does, but barely. It's he's like holding on to a thread. It's he's far away from the uh, the uh, the ship that helps him recreate his physical form mm -hmm. and it's been some time since then also the fey doesn't like fake humans in its realm so mm -hmm. he's still there but his soul is like grasping at straws almost in his physical form so like it just the wrong push even could yeah, separate him drooping a little bit and yeah. Ethel, you would absolutely pick up on that the uh also yeah. Byron's here. Yeah. Do you two run to each other? I would say, yeah. Very excited I, to see Ethel. Yeah, and I'm going to give Byron a big hug that he definitely does not find appropriate, I'm sure. All right, let's do the reverse as now Parallax. Remember, Alora is here, and Alora has gotten you to the rest of the group. She feels a little bit less pressure to rush out of here, but obviously Alora knows as now all of you do, that the more time you are spending in the Fae, perhaps a significant amount of time is passing on the outside. Uh, let's keep doing reunions, though. Just some light, fun. Uh, Sanjata and Sanjata has changed. How? How has Sanjata changed through the Fae? Uh, Sanjata has warmed up as much as Sanjata can in his current mental state um, to um, the other companions as a also not a real or a living human. Um, the Fae also do not like Sanjata's presence um, much like other humans. And I think on their travels, like some of the smaller Fae have like been just throwing tiny things at him during their pathway. It's like uh, you're causing you're the cause of all our trouble. Like the, all these little tiny. All things. right. Yeah. In fact, and Alora's been been like cut it out and like you know people have been like stop throwing things at Sinjata like just pebbles and things. Just something very annoying turned mm. into something a little heartwarming. Yeah, I actually think that the Fae have been listening to Alora a lot, even. Hmm. Um, 
They have not, however, been respecting at all Rex, unfortunately. Rex has had a very hard, a very hard, it feels like a day and a half to them of travel here in the Fae. Rex, uh, how has the Fae changed you? Um, Rex is both, uh, you know, determined to keep this group of friends safe. Mm-hmm. And so they're really trying um, to protect everyone through mind magic, make sure he's been working real hard with Buffalora, trying to make sure her brain doesn't break in the Fey realm. Um, but he's also kind of haunted. Uh, he keeps seeing shadows like out of his right at, right at the edge of his peripherals. And he's like kind of jumpy, but he's trying to hide it from everyone else because he's he feels like he's needs to protect everyone uh yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna go a little bit further and say that rex has actually manifested a goetia there is a second version of rex one version of rex completely calm focused on the task at hand but a second personality of rex is on hyper vigilant paranoid mode and is now always making wits plus composure plus four checks around you. Just like eyes on the back of your head, looking everywhere, freaking out. Is that the same vibe for our new character, Hunts the Storm? So, Ish, this is the first time that you are meeting these other mages, and some of them are joyously embracing. Others might be standing cautiously to the side. Hunts the storm is, is essentially been over, a little overwhelmed by the, uh, the just the nature of the place, and then and essentially in here it's like uh, everything's turned up to eleven with the sensory of the spirit world. It is because he's been trying really hard for the last few uh, years to really connect with humanity. And this place is like making that really hard to do. So, yeah, there are only really two humans to connect to here Rex and Alora. The other two don't feel like humans. Mm. But I think that all of you have kind of come together. There's a camaraderie that's been formed between the five. All right. So, where are we exactly? Where are we? You are in Titania's treasury chamber so essentially it's a room filled with golden wonders it belongs to a queen of the fey and that's where you found the mages or Laura found them because you followed fate to bring you here and after going on a series of quests cue montage anyone want to add anything to the montage there was definitely a very awkward um like pie eating contest to get over a bridge that no one wanted to do, but Byron was very good at because they didn't notice that just went right through. Well, no, it, it was in the physical body and Byron expected it to just go right through, but that's actually <laughs> part of the reason why Byron is so badly damaged now. <laughs> Alora probably had to use her axe because she's buff now, right? Yeah, what happened to Alora coming through the Fae? Um, I assume she still has not awakened despite her um, I assume annoyance at the fact that she can't understand what everyone else can understand. But yeah, she has a cool cold iron axe that Sinjata gave her, and she's ready to mess some stuff up. She's got feelings. And they've just grown. (laughs) So yeah, I think there's a scene where there's a very emotional... Um, Alora cutting down some vines or some other enemy that's coming in at the party and she's just, you know, she's really let her feelings out here in the Fae and you you do feel somewhat vindicated and like, yeah, everyone else is in on something, but I've got this axe. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, three other things that Alora up. cut through with the axe. Go. Three things that Alora cut through with the axe? Yep. A table full of food that was definitely cursed by the Fae. Pies um, everywhere. Yeah. Oh, absolutely everywhere. Um, don't eat those. I've read books. Um, let's see. A whole bunch of thick vines that, like, probably didn't really need to be cut through, but who doesn't want that? Like, I'm a cool person going through a jungle sort of moment. Also, Byron. But maybe right. that kind of hurt him, expecting it wouldn't hurt him as a ghost. But only, like, his foot a little bit. Oh, Yeah. So Byron is actually on crutches at the moment because you have had no healing magic in the entire party. Thought it would be fine. You're supposed to be a ghost. And it was really unfortunate that after the party got the sticks out of the woods to make the crutches for Byron in the splint, that it was also then that you were attacked by the leprechauns. And uh, they, they didn't chase you off the path because Rex knew not to go off the path. But it was a hard run for a while until we made it to the giant that scared off the leprechauns. Well, like they, they know not to go in the giant's territory. Mm, that's so true. Like, yeah. We met a big friendly giant. Yeah. Uh, the, the giant was, they had this one psych cloptic eye and they had some unusual character traits that you would normally associate only with modern culture oh. now what were those traits <laughs> uh, they talk can... <laughs> what I said can anyone answer sorry Ish, I didn't mean oh. to cut you off no no I was going to say they had a southern accent <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, they do. Nice to see you all. And Victoria, yeah, what, did, what did you want to add to the Giants? <laughs> oh, that they're exceedingly good at making sourdough bread without any human bones in them at all. Mm. That's what happens. And you all end up sat around a giant table. Like, there's a little table on top of their counter. And, like, you're eating the most delicious sourdough. Those of you who can eat and Byron is skeptical of eating at this point. Byron is still full of pie. <laughs> they were cursed okay. pies, by the way. Definitely cursed Laura pies. Laura also used her axe to cut the bread because it is a really, really big loaf. Giant. It's gonna make giant proportion size loaves. Thanks. Mm -hmm. But for that weird, you were looking for a weird modern touch, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we need one more weird modern part. They have a uh, very large, um, uh, they have not very large, but like a lot of normal sized jars of, um, what's it called, Vegemite? Oh. Because <laughs> they, Vegemite's fairly modern, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that counts. Not on bread. <laughs> And I just pinky dip a dollop out of each jar to put on bread. Just like stacks yeah. of cards. I have no idea what bed is, but... It's gross. The yes. Southern uh, Central them really into Australia. <laughs> oh, Vegemite is delicious. Do you want to sponsor us? I love your product. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We do, we do product sponsorship sponsors, but only if they're Vegemite. Vegemite. Uh, and I think that there is also something strange that happens while you are there eating your Vegemite. I don't know if you put Vegemite on or not, uh, but eating your bread, there is a person dressed in rags who comes out from in between two massive jars and they like gesture over to the five of you. Hmm. I point this person out so we can all see them. Do you see that? Or is it an illusion? Over there. Mm -hmm. I think Sanjata will go over and like, yeah, but more intimidatingly, like don't mess 
No, oh, yeah, they're scared. They're scared. Very scared of you. Uh, Rex will also go forward um, as. Yeah, Rex can detect that they're like a human. They've got a human-like mind, but they're definitely not quite human. And they say, hey, hey, you guys got to get out of here. It's not safe around here. Why would you say that? You're going to end up in the cage with all the other ones. I got pictures, and they take out their take out their cellular phone and they show you on their cell phone that there is a uh, a cage like a hamster's cage upstairs if you climb the beanstalk in the giant's castle in their bedroom uh, it's right next to a normal sized house what is it how did you get these pictures oh yeah there's no wi-fi but the phone still works all right i took them it's right up the beanstalk rex is like I know you think we need to save them, but this is a trap. He's trying to get us off the beaten path. We're leaving, but we're not. We're not listening to this guy. No, this no, no. It does take the phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> scrolling. It like gives it to Rex. Yeah, like, this isn't supposed to be here. In fact, as Sanjata touches on the phone, there's like a bolt of black lightning in between his necrosed finger and the screen. Oops, I hand it to Rex. <laughs> because that has to be from the timeline that doesn't exist, right? Or another timeline. So Jada doesn't say that, but I am asking. Just, yeah, roll an occult check. A, I guess an intelligence occult check. Not that I can communicate my answers now that I zap the phone and can't text on it. Well, I have no idea. It's a phone. I feel like sanjata has been out of the phone world for a while. Yep. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know that there aren't any cell phones in the Nega timeline. Yeah, people mostly mm-hmm. just rely on spirits. There are these giant floating eyeballs that float through the sky, and they are willing to convey messages if you pay them a blood price. It's mm-hmm. like the postal service, but for ideas. It's just a different type of iPhone. <laughs> it's the iPhones <laughs> of a new generation. <laughs> right, so are you going to leave as this person suggested, break out the humans or stay for dinner with the giants because the giants would love to have you for dinner. Now let's get out of here. They want to eat us. Don't like the way you phrased that. (laughs) Yeah, Rex Rex puts an idea in the giant's mind that like everyone here is um, ill and needs to leave or else it's going to start smelling really bad in this cave. Rex... I'm I'm sorry that you chose that course of action because as you reach out to touch their minds, their minds are like nothing that you've ever felt before. Because while they are giant, they are also true fey. You're going to have to roll a resolve plus composure check. One success. I think that Rex staggers away with a massive headache as he tries to reach out. You saw things in there, things you didn't want to see, things that you might be remembering or you might be seeing for the first time, but Rex does as Rex often does and just puts that aside. No big deal. And so you escape from the giants and yeah, I think that there was one last zany quest where you heard you heard in the giants kitchen about Titania and how Titania had found these wizards and everyone was coming to see the wizards. They were doing something spectacular. So everyone wanted to go to Titania's ball. I'd like to hear somebody else add one last thing to the montage if you'd like. We can add more than one if you all have wonderful ideas. I think we need at least one more good one in the montage. I like if we came to a tree that had Giant weird fruit. Yes. Oh, well, that's everywhere in the Fey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a uh, a tiny little person there with a little cane, and they they're trying to they're trying to sell you on the fruit. Exactly. And uh, really, oh, I want to taste this fruit before I leave. Oh yes, yeah, the mellow swish fruit. It really gives you a lot of juice. Yeah, let's do it. (laughs) I want to taste this fruit. Then what happens? I think, well, it is 
hobgoblin fruit. So something definitely happens. And <laughs> I'm just giggling at some comments that you all are making. I, I think you should bring it up so the audience can giggle about it as well. Yeah. Can we eat hobgoblin fruits? Uh, list of known goblin fruits. The aether fruit, the babble gum, the blood apple, the blood bane, the blood root, the broomble, the bruggle wort, the choo-choo clum, the cocoa ronge, the coral scalp, the dactyl, the jenny apples. Oh, those ones sound dangerous. Hide fruit, nightcap, night river. I'm just going to a random one and you found the dactyl. These oily, juicy fruits resemble dates and prosper in arid environments. When consumed, a dactyl makes the imbiber seem new and exciting to everyone you interact with. You gain a nine again on all social roles for your trip to the Fae. Okay. Y'all want a dactyl out? It's pretty good. Bam. Seems like the right move. I mean, yeah, I ate a bunch of cursed pies. Might as well eat some dactyls. Keep it going. Yeah. I think that goes good for Byron. It's the first thing that's gone well. You loving the dactyl. There you are, Byron. Enjoy the sweet dactyl. Yeah. It is it is quite sweet. Hmm. Indubitably. If Alora splits one in half with her axe, is there like a shape on the inside from the seeds, like an apple has a star? Yes. But is it something terrible because it's a goblin fruit, like a skull? Uh, It's got these, uh, it's got these hooks that go around like horns and wive up. It's fairly uh, yonic, actually. Hmm. We should save some of these seeds. Maybe we can grow a dactyl tree in on the ship. Hey, you can't take my seeds. Those only prosper in arid environments. Plus, how are you going to pay for that stuff? I'm a hobgoblin. <laughs> we could pay for it with a story. Yeah, I love that. Tell me all the stories. Whoa. A story about a lost tribe in the wilderness. Um. And then go to the phone phone. <laughs> oh man I haven't published any of the werewolf content at this point which means that none of you have seen Isha's awesome journey but I am publishing it and you should all come check it out I think I'm going to do the next one the first one next week so it's oh, here. epic yeah it, well here. yeah that's the one <laughs> I'll... I always like that it was very fun. yeah all right well, uh, after like, mm-hmm. I think as Hansa Storm was telling that story, like a bunch of different like fane creatures are coming around, like listening. Like a story becomes just a little story circle. And then there's yeah. a, I think a, a snake boy and raven girl just sitting there in the corner sharing a rat. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. I bust out my fluke. fluke. You, yeah, I think that that means you need to roll a performance check. All right. Ahano's laughing fluke. Performance check. Are uh, you using any of its magical abilities? Yeah, why not? Presence and expression. Um, oh, pretty good. Do you nine to re-roll? Because it's a social thing? Uh, it is a social thing. Yeah, no nine. There's two eights. Well, eights are still pretty good. And the performance goes great. The Fey are all about it. They are like hanging on your every note. They're not great notes, but they haven't seen very much content recently. So they're hungry for it. And yeah, you now have Fey onlookers. I am giving you a condition. That condition is that you have fairy onlookers. The party is being followed. Specifically, Hunts the Storm is being followed. I like these fey on. I like these little Princess Mononoke guys. And I think that you do. You get to 
the ball, you sneak in the door, they don't let you in, you break down the door, Alora comes rushing in, sees the queen, mages cover for Alora, doesn't get killed by the fae, escapes out the back. Alora did absolutely see that the fae that they were talking to had another copy of her on the ground, but cut in half. Just like as decor, Titania Ramona, I'm looking at you. Cut in half hamburger way or hot dog way? Mm, whatever Darth Maul is. Hamburger? Hamburger. Hamburger. Okay. They're both upsetting. I just wanted to know how upsetting. And who would Alora most like to see? Is Alora running to Ethel or Parallax or no one now that you're all together? He's going to run up to Parallax but then slap him across the face. Where have you been? <laughs> kind of loves that. And I like a hold up to my cheek. I'm like, so sorry. This is not what I wanted for you at all. I'm fully in control of time magic and you can't even send a message. Do you know how long it's been? Time in the Fey is hard for me to control. We were, in a sense, prisoners here. I, I had no way to communicate. And I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm glad to see you, but... We need to get out of here. And we'll talk more then. I think Hannah high fives Ethel. Like, yes, Alora's found her voice. She's the best. Yeah, uh, Mona also gives her a pat on the back. Yeah, Ethel will high five Hannah back. Like, maybe there'll be like a lover's fight that we can watch, a lover's quarrel. Ooh, I love those. I don't think it should be a lover or anything, but I like the quarrel part. (laughs) It's good for character development. How long has it been? There's a strange discussion discordant sound. You all hear it, and Parallax, with your time senses, you can hear it and speed it up. And when it sped up, it sounds like a clock ticking. Does it, does it sound like a certain type of clock? Like a... Time nurses. Six successes. Right, right. Six, six successes. Uh, first of all, you take a beat. You've done an exceptional success. And as you reach out to it, you can tell that it is part of powerful time mages Nimbus and that they are drawing you to them. It's a signal, a message to you specifically. And as you feel it pulling you, you can just follow it if you'd like to do it with six successes. You also with six successes, recognize the specific clock that made the ticking sound. It's your pocket watch, but magnified. Sound has been modified to be this loud, drawn out, massive clunk, clunk. But somehow when you adjust it, you know it's the tin inside your magical pocket watch. I pull my watch out and I just, you know, I look at it real quick. Sort of like feel it in my hand. All of you feel the magic of the pocket watch. Mona, with your prime sight, you can tell that the face of the pocket watch has been replaced by a piece of the ladder that took humanity into the stars. Roll a prime plus gnosis check, Mona. What does anyone else do? I am doing a quick life sight on our new friend, our stranger, this stranger who has joined our our group. Yep, that's right. Life plus Gnosis. And I think that you you do feel that gaze. It's very intent upon you, Hunts the Storm. And you haven't really met Hannah. And Hannah looks a little sketch, honestly. So what do they what do they look like, Katie? Hannah has what did they do to their hair to blend in? It's no longer green. I think it's kind of like long and like kind of just shaggy and like a nondescript brown, but is wearing too many layers of clothes, but none of them are really should be worn right now. They're very like ripped and muddy and have been just, you wouldn't donate them, you would throw them out, but it's wearing a lot of layers of them. And of course they're clothes from the future to you. Yes, oh also, yeah, it's like layers of shirts that have I don't know if you have gingham stripes up and down, <laughs> vertical and horizontal stripes, patterns you've never seen. I don't yeah. know. Blue pants and... And Parallax probably looks like what 
So you didn't see the Europeans for very long, but you imagine that they might be dressed sort of like what Parallax is wearing, but maybe it's like a futuristic techno version of that. And um, Mona, of course, conjured a fey gown, so that looks pretty normal in a way to you. Just a casual fey gown. I got five successes. I got one. Okay, with one success on the stone, you can tell that it's very, very shiny and very, very powerful. You can't tell much more than that. You could try to use sites other than Prime Sight, but with five successes on that roll, as you look at Hunts the Storm, you can see that their muscle structure is not human. It is every muscle fiber layers upon layers on itself. You gain two beats. You can also tell that it's highly malleable muscle. You think that they are able to change forms and they have underneath their skin a layer of bone. It seems like a living, breathing turtle shell. Like they have a turtle shell broken up and spread throughout their body like a sub-skin armor. You've never seen anybody like this. And this doesn't feel like something a life mage has done to themselves. It's no. It's really cool. It's but... really cool, and it's almost natural. It's like completely natural. This is not a Bissell thing at all. It's like, in fact, you can't even resist it. You switch to your spirit eyes. Mm-hmm. It's like a spirit. It's like this is a person and a spirit interwoven in one, just as nature would intend it to be. Roll spirit gnosis. You mean like the Nemean? The Nemean was wrong. This is what the Nemean wanted to be. Oh. Um. Two. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, It's like a perfected it's not a human anymore, not a human at all, but it's it's a creature. This is a creature of mother nature. And you feel that so hard within your being. And in fact, Ish, would you like to say anything else that Hannah sees as they look upon your character with their life and spirit sights? You know, I mean, did a fantastic job of playing. If just by seeing life and spirit. Uh, yeah, just the melding of flesh and muscles and bones, fusion of spirit and flesh together, if nature could manifest that naturally. And uh, yeah, but a lot of uh, turtle shell spread throughout those muscles, the sort of dermal layers. That seems more spirit than, yeah. And uh, yeah, a very complex woven, interwoven structure of muscles that seem to be able to, that shouldn't exist within the frame that they're that you can see through. So this is like the most beautiful being that Hannah has ever seen, right? Yeah, I guess that would physically. That is how Hannah would take it. But on the outside just a Native American man, his gear, his spear, his medicine bag. I know there's some weird sound thing going on, but Hannah's just gonna go up and be like, How are you the way that you are? I'm Hannah. Hello, I go by Hunts the Storm. I shake like that's what I'm used to. I'm the way Gaia made what I have to be, what I need to be again. Who are you? I am currently known as Hannah, or this is part of, uh, I'm part of this, the other half of our cabal, the, this group that I guess you've made friends with Rex and Sanjata and Flora and Byron. This is the other half of the group. Um, Hannah and Mona and Parallax and Ethel. That's everyone, right? Yeah. Um, I am going to talk about your existence at some point because I have so much to learn from you. But right now, um, what are you, in the least rudest way possible, what are you doing here? I'm here because I the spirits have guided me to this point and time and place, if you can call this a place. I'm here because I'm trying to save my people from oblivion, best way to put it. And to do that, I've been guided here I've been chasing what I call the storm for a long time. And I think I've found it. I'm certain I have. I believe to think uh, it's been referred to as the time ship, as the storm. That's what I call it. And this is where I'm going to put the time ship's theme song in, which is the sound of 
the moons of Saturn. I think we can help with that. And I think you are good people. And I would like to work with you to help save my people and whatever noble things you are trying to do with them. I think you're putting a lot of faith in us thinking back to all the things that we've destroyed putting a lot of faith in us but i we're trying to be good people and i think we're fighting the same oblivion are you friends with i forgot what their name is the person that we met who we met through bright eyes oh two soul i don't know bright eyes you actually don't know bright eyes but you do know the twin soul so there is a a person who lives in the Dawnlands, a medicine healer. And oh, you okay. know of them. Definitely. They actually were the ones who okay. told you where to find the uh, entrance to the time ship. Yeah. Okay. Now we have uh, some ask from two souls too. So I guess we're all working together. Yes. This is good. Why are you referring to our the time ship as a storm in a bad way or just like force of nature way? It's not necessarily a bad thing. As you're saying this, reality is breaking apart. As time continues to pass here, things are shaking and shuddering. I do think that there is a moment for anybody else who wants to take an action. Because as you two were talking, I think that people were doing some other things. Did we leave anyone on the ship? No. The Deathles? Oh, the Deathles, yes. Okay, they, that doesn't count. The devil. I think we need to get back to the ship. Parallax, the sound, the breaking stuff. Is this like a timey wimey thing? Do we have to go? Time's passed. Uh, of the war. You're, you bulked up. Thumbs up. Yeah, I, I do think that before there is that acknowledgement that things are breaking because it does happen like again where the noise happens. I just want to hear what maybe Mona and Ethel, Parallax, Alora, what are they up to? I'll go first. Mona, so you, uh, Mona didn't get a quite good prime feel with the crystal, mm -hmm. but I'd like to try instead of prime using intelligence investigation because yep. Mona's one of Mona's obsessions is finding out how things work. Yep, absolutely. Okay, or Parallax, are you allowing Mona to inspect your new toy briefly? You're gonna hand it to Mona. No, absolutely not. I will let her look at it while I'm holding on to it. Four successes. Okay, with four successes, you can tell that all along this thing are invisible glyphs only able to be seen by you with your prime sight. They are written in high speech, and in fact, it's almost like the crystal itself is made out of language. The form and all of it is laced with just one sentiment. And that is flow, progression, static, direction, driving, onward, go. And with four successes on your investigation check, you begin to understand that this is a piece of reality. This is a piece of the part of the God machine that is time. This is a piece of time, time itself. Right. So I must have the piece that is reality. Reality, yeah. And so, and Hannah's shattered, right? Uh, Hannah's is in their chest. Oh, they still have it. And so yep. that one must be life. Okay. So, uh, and if you want, you could look at them closely and see some of the words that are inscribed upon them. Yeah. So yours says existence, being, form. It says truth. It says light, but it also seems to be just, it's mostly just one concept. And that is, 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 is. You are holding, when you hold your crystal, a crystal of is. In fact, Can you I... could rename the crystal in your inventory to the crystal of is. Okay. What is Ethel doing during all of this time? Ethel would like to cast a death ward on everyone as reality slowly breaks apart and assumes that maybe we are all going to like die or plunge yep. into death which would be you know, nice just dip a toe and Alora is going to walk up to parallax and stick her hand out with the look that says that i your wife that you left behind would like to see that fancy trinket that you have now please you know the one that you couldn't keep enough time with to like you know come back in a timely manner <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going to take the extended hand and grab it. And we're going to like 
we gotta go. And I started pulling her. We're gonna, I'm gonna follow the noise. I'm gonna follow the clock. So we, we gotta take this out. All right. Is the party following Parallax? Can I gleam a Nimbus from this magic being thrown at our faces? You actually can't even tell that it's magic, really, because it's in the Fae and everything is weird. It was a specifically designed message through time for Parallax. All you can tell is that Parallax is acting weird. And I can't cast any prime magic to figure out who cast it? You can't because you haven't recognized it as a Nimbus yet. If you did, you would be able to, but Parallax never told you. Okay. Parallax, are we going to the place where we're going to fix all this falling apart? Don't we have to go back to the ship to do that? You're running across a drawbridge into a forest. Where are they going? Well, I can then- use Prime to see yeah. the ley lines because I know we need to get to somewhere that is packed with mana to bring back to our ship. Yeah. Are we following as- a ley line? As you look up at the sky, the ley lines here in the Fey don't look like the normal web that you would see in the mortal world. They're straight and at 90 degree angles, like a checkerboard. And you are headed directly towards one of the epicenters where two lines cross. Where are we going? I follow. Relax, slow down. I am not a healthy individual. Yeah, are you running fast enough that you need to roll athletics checks? I would say we're running. Definitely walking at a brisk pace. Okay. I think Hannah would stop until they know where we're going because it's Parallax hasn't always been a good person. It's a little suspicious. That's suspicious. Anybody else stopping? Laura is being pulled behind and Ethel is walking. She does not run. <laughs> Just like, where are we going? Yeah, Ethel, you hear Hannah say that as you walk past. Yeah, where are we going? Back to the time ship? You are pretty far away from Parallax. Parallax is not walking like you are. Parallax is hustling. Yeah, I I basically, I'll yell back, we're going to the source, because everyone's obviously not following me. The source of what? (laughs) I just do like one of these motions, just like you don't hear that. I'm right behind Parallax. Okay, right next to Parallax, you can see as you enter into the woods and the branches begin to blot out the sun, which was already above you that the trees have embedded in each one of them a person. In the trunk of the tree? In the trunk of the tree. Like living people? Their eyes are closed and they are not saying anything. They may be alive. They may just be artistic statues. I'm doing a life sight check on them. Yeah, they're alive. The, yeah. But I'm actually going to say that Hannah is too far back to react at this point. So this is only Hunt the Storm, Parallax, mm-hmm. and Alora who are there at this point. Definitely don't look into their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow gaze to see what I can see. If there's if there's anything, uh, spirits, there are spirits. And see if they're there is a massive spiritual circulatory system that moves through the trees like a mycelial network. It flows from these trees back to the castle which you just left. The castle beats like a large spiritual heart as the strength is drawn from these people and thrust into that castle. Right, I think it's bad. But maybe they deserve it. Maybe. 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 Hannah and Ethel and Mona, are you catching up? Are you running to catch up? I'm walking next to Ethel and um, Hannah. Hannah is like annoyed, is annoyed, and is going to become a squirrel to like run through the trees and try and catch up. Yeah, uh, I think that you succeed on that life gnosis check and you are now a squirrel. Um, <laughs> You do know that there is a chance that you get lost to the form of a squirrel and beca- start to think like a squirrel. So you should just be aware of that risk as you continue your wild shape. I mean, it's okay. I didn't know that. But I'll it, run <laughs> squirrel through the people trees. Uh, yeah. Just trying to catch up so I can like leap from a tree as a squirrel on Parallax's you know shoulder. That happens. Langley, and then back down to the ground and is a human. Yeah, that all happens. Everything that you've just said. You don't have matter magic, so your clothes will not transform with you. Oh, no. All right. Well, I'll pick up Hannah's clothes for them. 
as I walk by because Ethel is still not running. She didn't run for the mile run in gym class and she's not running for this. But Alora is going to ask if like, since she has her axe, if she should chop those people out of the trees to free them. Are they being killed by the trees? Parallax is walking onwards, but unclear to your eyes, Hunts the Storm, whether they are being killed or not. All I can tell is that they're being drained. Their life force is being drained and it's fueling the castle. Uh, then we sh- should try to rescue them, shouldn't we? Well, not necessarily. Can I see if I can separate them? Like, do the life site and then see if i can pull a person out of a tree yeah you're going to a tree and you're going to pull them out hmm? all right roll life now. we don't know these could be these oh, people right. could be punishment these could be bad people but let's do it let's I guess let's like life site first like what's going on and then and then see if it's a good idea see that the tree is sustaining them also it, the tree is definitely sustaining them also it looks as though their circulatory system has actually become one with a greater circulatory system underneath them so blood is flowing into and out of them they have discernible bodies separate from the trees and you do think it would be possible for you to extricate them but you don't know if it would also be damaging to them to do so. But you're a life master. You could fix them if it was. Um, uh, can Rex do just a little? Can you just look and see, like, oh, are they in pain? Are they asleep? Are they vegetative? <laughs> No pun intended. Because I I think I could separate them, but I don't know if that's going to be good for them because I don't know if I can put them back if it's bad. Rex uh, gets three successes on a mind gnosis. All right. With three successes on a mind gnosis, you would be aware that these people are all experiencing the same dream. They are all dreaming of being this forest in the Fae. And they are all experiencing what the forest is experiencing it's kind of like the borg collective as they are all being trees together and while they do have separate identities in that memory and are viewing it through their own lens they are all experiencing the same memories of being all of these trees at once the trees are watching you rex also with his dots and a cult as a member of the mysterium would recognize that these are kidnapped humans. These are humans who are being turned into changelings. Their dreams and imagination are being used as fuel, as too is their blood. These are victims of a true fae. Rex shares that with the group. Oh, well, that's not good. Mm. Would you like to try and free one? Uh, the world does the shuddering thing again. <laughs> If we're going to free one, we only have time for one. So pick why wi- choose wisely, I guess. If we free one, then they're going to be this, you know, being turned into a changeling pulled out of something that might now be traumatic. We can't bring them to wherever it is we're going to. I'm pretty sure it's going to be dangerous, Parallax. Parallax, is this the source you heard, the ticking that you heard? Was it these trees? It's not, right? No, it's definitely past this. Yeah. You, you've been itching so. to go for some time now. Oh, I thought I kept going. I didn't even think oh, I stopped for the Oh, uh, Parallax is gone. <laughs> so I look right, Parallax? Oh, no. <laughs> um, we're going to have to come back. All right. We better catch up. All right. As you run to catch up, Parallax, there is, crossing the path, a little stream that flows downhill. It splashes over some rocks, and it feels familiar charlotte i see that you've sent me a message that says i'm not running you will lose the group if you are not running and that goes for you too ethel mona you know what oh, mona a- does not like to run and they have a little bit of fate sight so they can just fate themselves to wherever parallax is um you also have forces magic and can accelerate both of your speeds so that you could power walk there. Alternatively, could I fate magic their path to be uphill so they just go slower? It's your path too. You're you're all going in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, mean, that's you could, you could complicate their path with fate magic. Don't get me wrong. Would you like to make 
complications in the Fey occur to your fellow party members. Yeah, just to slow him down a little bit. Yeah, I'm all right. 19, we'll fate 19 nurses. and short-sighted. This feels like a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Rather no, you know what? Running. You know what? It just happens. Would you pull two cards from the tarot deck for me? Yes. I got the nine of cups mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the one of pentacles. Suddenly, as you are trying to get to your destination, nymphs explode from the woods. Fairies and fae start dancing around you and showering you with drinks and gifts, throwing pieces of glittering rocks around at you. You'll find yourself surrounded, all of you, except for the walking party. So it's suddenly we got bombarded by a fairy rave. Yeah, you, you're in the middle of a fairy rave. You don't know where it came from. You don't know why this happened. It's really intense, actually. I just put my through it. All right, that sounds it. like a socialized check. Maybe a dexterity socialize? Dexterity socialize. You gotta dance your way through it. All right, I'm gonna take his advice. I've gotta spend willpower to get through this. <laughs> oh, no. It's like all of your character well. creation session. I got nothing higher than a four. You are now covered in nymphs. You are just absolutely besotted in nymphs. They are whispering sweet nothings in your ear. They are admiring your muscles and hanging on your arms. My skin has ripped off my muscles. They don't care. They're the fae. They think it's great. One of them is touching the the muscle parts. Oh yeah, a uh, Hunsa store. My skin is ripped everywhere. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um, look. You're all very flattering. Just trying to get over there. Can I like muscle my way out of? If you would like to roll intimidate, or if you would like to roll strength, yeah, you could roll strength athletics to physically force your way through the crowd. I just got one success on the dex. Yeah, you're not doing super great, and I'm gonna say that the uh, the walking party has now caught up to all of you inside the creepy forest. I got two successes. All worked. Look, I'll me. call you later. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. So weird. Yeah, wow. and like you, nice uh, you managed to grab onto Hunts the Storm and pull out of the crowd, and the nymphs disperse, and everybody's just there and kind of tired looking now. Uh, Mona is uh, turns to Ethel and just like gives her a high five, like I'm so proud of you. Look at. What you created? Yeah, the, the sound that means that you're still running out of time goes. And we're off. I keep moving. All right. So here's the thing. Just up ahead, the path is crossed by this stream that goes downhill. And you're not supposed to go off the path. But something inside your soul tells you that you you have to go down the path. You have to go off the path and follow the stream. Sometimes you got to go off the beaten path. And I guess I'll... Do you say that out loud? Yeah. And I follow the stream. No, 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 no. Um, Mona's going to ho- stop you right there. I think you are in need of a brain check, Rex. Yeah, Rex doesn't know what's going on. Doesn't seem to be with Parallax's brain, though. Can I do like, just a fate check on Parallax right now? Yep, absolutely. You roll fate gnosis. Could I assist having fate as well? No, but you could roll separately. Okay. In fact, you could roll interconnections. If you'd like to, since that's a rope for you. Ethel, you also have fate magic. Do you care about this situation? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm rolling too. All right. Three, and six, Parallax, six. of course, you have divination. You have a bunch of magic powers. Yeah, I guess I'll... I want to do. Wait, there's a river? That... Yeah, it is a stream. It's not much of a river. And it crosses the path. And Parallax has just said that they want to go off the path. You can tell that there is a spirit in this water. I want to use... Eventually, part of the water. Yes. I got seven successes. What? Seven. You find that why? Oh, but I rolled a bunch of times. Okay, and you also got seven. So both of you take beats. Wow, Katie, did you get seven successes? Oh, do we have nine against right now? No, not at the moment. The social beat. Oh, I did. From the free oh, yeah. 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 So, Katie, how many successes? Three. Three. With three successes, you can tell that there's some sort of fate manipulation happening here. Parallax and all of you are being manipulated to follow that stream. There's something very powerful pulling you in that direction. It's pulling you to something very powerful and very serious. You don't know what it is. Mona, any any interconnections? 
Yeah, I got four well, succe- successes. So I can defeat possessions, alterations yep. of mind control, yep. and people who have had their fate altered. It's weird because Parallax hasn't had his fate altered. No one has messed with Parallax's t- fate, but yet Parallax's fate is connected to this stream. Parallax is destined to follow it time and time again because Parallax, it is the stream from your awakening here in the Fey. I got five successes. With those five successes, you can... Heart. So, you with the heart of the water, you really can feel this, this water spirit is not its full self and it feels intentional. You can tell that there is something weakening. It's like the whole water spirit has been weakened down to this trickle, and it could be a raging river, but it's just a trickle. You can feel that the the river here is calm and purposeful, is what the spirit feels like right now. And if you'd like, you could, of course, say something to that spirit or like commune with it in some way. But Ethel, with seven successes on your fate gnosis check, there is a moment where Parallax says, sometimes you've got to go off the beaten path. And then time stops, even for Parallax. Whoa. But it doesn't for you. And you hear a sound from behind you. I turn around. There's a little old man. Their skin is dark and weathered. Their beard is long and white. They look like they might come from someplace Mediterranean or North African from their attire, which is these long flowing white desert robes. They look a little out of place here in this creepy forest. And they have wrinkles, a lot of wrinkles, including large wrinkles around their eyes and a big smile like a friendly old man here in the Fey who stopped time for an Archmaster of Time. And I will say, can I help you to that person? They, Assuming they, 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 yeah, they, they nod to your question like, mm-hmm. do you not talk? Of course I talk. I just don't like it. Li- listen, listen, just come sit, come sit on this log. Um, okay, I sit on the log. Sometimes I do need help, and I do need your help, Ermengard Ward. How do you know my name? I know everything. Do you know that I cheated on my Spanish test? I didn't care about that. I didn't care about it one bit. And I'm not trying to be a god, because that's not who I am. My name is Merlin. And they (gasps) disappear in a puff of smoke, and time resumes. Did you all see that? Yes. Parallax is trying to jump into the water. We must stop them or we know what happened. No, 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 no. That's the only thing. No, no, no. Mer- Did you not see Merlin? Like, mystical Arthur legend Merlin? Beard? I don't know any of those words. Oh, he drove our time ship a long time ago. Hey, with the oh. team. That's very impressive. I went through our clue board and trying to make a new one. I know all the clues now. <laughs> he said he needed our help. He needed my help. He knew my real name. Ethel, not your real name. Uh, it, it is. It is. It's, it, yeah. I mean, like, you know, my, it doesn't matter. That's the storm. That's a great name. You focus on that. Um, <laughs> what did he need help with? He didn't say, but he said he needed our help. And then he vanished. I don't think he would still be alive if he was piloting the time ship like when it was made. I think he's Merlin, and he's like in books forever. So yeah, I mean, do you think he ages backwards like he does in the story? The reality does the shuddering thing where oh. it's breaking apart. It's breaking apart. All right. Yep. That's. Uh, I'm just gonna move. In the direction that my feet take me. Mona is going to fall on, like, backwards with a horse's spell. So so she kind of just, like, releases her wings and then just falls backwards 
on this bridge. So she's facing her head upwards to all these crisscross ley lines. And she's going to reach out to the machine god. Because Merlin just asked for help. And Merlin... I was a very powerful wizard, and I'm sure the machine god is friends with him. And she, her obsession is to, I guess, find out how things work, and, and she wants to figure out what's going on. The god machine is like an absentee father, never there to hear your requests. And they don't have opinions about Merlin or Parallax, or you, or Hannah, hunts the storm. The God Machine is, and it is in a very true and real sense, the form and embodiment of this world, the Fae, as well as it is reality. The God Machine is present in all reality. It is the stuff that reality is made out of. And here in the Fae, it's different. Here in the Fae, it's more like a description of a machine. Think. Right, the that. Fae is like the blueprints yes. of the time machine in the real world. Oh, of reality. The Fae of is reality. like drawing of reality. The Fae yeah. isn't true reality to you. It's like the blueprints of the God Machine. And you can see that here in the structures of the Fae, there is a missing piece. And you are walking towards that hole. And the hole is in the shape of a figure eight. Okay. What might that mean to Mona? You don't know. You're not sure. All you know is that there's something in the Fae that is up with the God Machine, and it could be whatever you're walking towards. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share that with the group. Do we know that map, the figure eight snake map? Yep. That's a real mapping game. Hannah had it. Okay. Still does. Hannah still does in the clothes that you're holding, probably. In one of those pockets, you'll never find it. Oh, the map? Yeah. Yeah, it's like definitely readable. <laughs> it's in some pocket. I actually think quick tour of Hannah's pockets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I have things written down. <laughs> um, I have... Hmm. A lightsaber. I have a couple of copper coins. I have two. I think I didn't use them. I have a rat, a knife. I know of Titania's prison orb, a flask. I think I have the map. I'm gonna put the map down. Map. Mostly readable. And I think uh, a potato. Of course. Maybe if I need to turn it into a potato bug, reverse it. And some bugs in case you need to make it go the other direction as well. Yeah, bugs that don't fly, beetles, some beetles that also have some potato that they can eat. It's like a whole. It's an ecosystem. There's an (laughs) ecosystem in one of the pockets. There's like a lot of dirt also, just just dirt. The potato has started to grow. Yeah, pockets. Oh, did you need to look at the map? Did you need it right now? I mean, if Mona looks at it, does it mean anything more to her with that figure eight that she was just seeing? It's like one to one match almost in shape it's the Ouroboros. that's like the time shift that's like the spirit of time that's like the whole thing that's been haunting our lives for how long have has it been haunt when how long has this has this been well it is now completely indeterminate <laughs> welcome to the fey you have no idea how long it's been since you've been here let alone on your whole adventure it's all timey wimey now you're in doctor who episodes So if Ethel, so Mona, you saw the Ouroboros, and Ethel, you saw Merlin, and Parallax still feels like we should go off the beaten path, we're probably all going towards that, all of that stuff. It's probably fine. Parallax, you think it's going to stop reality? Still want to go? Yeah, I think we need to go this way, or at least I have to. I'll say one last thing. I communed with this spirit of this river, stream, and it said that it, once it, it could be more powerful, it was released somehow. I think we should try and open it up or release it or enter it, see what happens. I think it could fuel the ship, perhaps, or take us to another place. Let's do it. Like a dam? Do you want us to knock over a dam? Yeah. Spiritual dam. Spirit. Parallax, can you do it? I mean, yeah, I can do anything. Let's try it. Let's stop, stop trying to stop Parallax now. Let's do it. Are we all agreed? Are we cool now? All right, I grab Alora's hand again. <laughs> all right, so you're going down the stream? 
That's yep. Can we create a chain of touching each other on to each other and, and jump into this parallax in the lead? It's not running very quickly. It's uh, you could walk into it. It would only be up to your uh, knees at most. Well, I didn't. Know. Uh, yes, uh, it is. A, it's a small stream, not very large at this point, but it's rocky and it's going downhill, descending through the trees. The trees out here don't have as many people in them. In fact, they are mostly just hauntingly large trees that loom on either side of you, with a crack of the sky opening above. It's like parting in the world, and you're following it. It's not a path, but yet it feels quite a bit like a secret path. Then, from the woods, and all of you with fate magic can tell that this is like a momentous thing, there emerges a ten foot tall, while on its four legs, bear. A powerful spirit. It is black with midnight blue fur massive yellow eyes. There are scars in its nose and along some of its skin. One of the ears seems to be missing a corner. And it looks down at you, Parallax, and you recognize it as Ursa Major. This is your spirit guide. I don't even know what to say. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's funny that I should uh, meet you here. Or were you here all along? And this is where is this where it all hmm. was I here before it turns without answering you but you know that the answer to that question is yes and something feels like you've been here before many times as you walk after the bear and into the crystal cave from your visions the opening yawns if the river was undammed this cave would flood. It opens into a small grotto, a little mushroom-lit, crystalline cave with massive pointed structures that jut out. It looks like it could be quartz, maybe? Massive quartz crystals? And you are now at the mouth of this cave. The bear goes inside. I might definitely go in. I look to Alora and ask if would you like to come in as well? It's totally okay if you want to stay out here. No, I'll come. Is that bear safe? They're an old friend. Who did I marry? Um, <laughs> she's gonna follow you in. The rest of the group as well. Can we come as well? Yeah, I'll go, but with my spirit sight on so I can keep an eye on that bear. That's all. I'll go. But hang back, like Parallax talking to this bear. It's like maybe this is a, a them thing slowly behind. As you walk through the first massive cavern and into a second and into a third, you're haunted by its ethereal beauty. These rooms are luminous and magical. In the second cavern, there's a chessboard with strange pieces arrayed upon it two empty stools. The bear is no longer in sight, but Parallax walks onwards, as if still following, deeper back into another cavern. And there, suspended on one of the walls, though the cave goes deeper yet, encased in crystal, Ethel recognizes the white beard and the weathered skin of the man who introduced himself as Merlin, a tiny, tiny speck of an old man from this distance, looks at you and laughs a little. <laughs> the laughter echoes through the cave. <laughs> I know Ethel said she doesn't run, but she's going to run up to this crystal thing and ask Merlin, who put you in there? Oh, it's no bother. I simply adore that dress, though. Would you do a spin? Oh, oh. yeah. Definitely will do a spin. Oh, yes. Titania weaves the finest materials. Just wait until she assumes her next form. Are you friends with that person? Well, I wouldn't say. Well, I'd... It's complicated. It's very, very complicated, as is life. But we don't have time to dither about drama. No. No. I see you all here. And it brings my heart to know that you are finally united and that we may begin our good work. 
And what good work would that be? We stand upon the precipice of all realities, and you have seen over the edge. As you begin to look deeper into the hearts of these mysteries, the darkness will stare back at you. And you have a choice, a chance even, to do perhaps what I could not. Who are you? We don't know you. My name is Merle. Can I look Early. at the gnosis? Hmm? Uh, yeah, roll prime gnosis as you examine them. And you can use supernal vision to not only see their nimbus, but ask a number of questions about their magic. Anybody else would like to cast any spells or do anything? Yeah, I want to do a life magic on this Merly who lives inside of a rock. Uh, they are part of the root structure and their blood and life essence is being sapped just as the people in the trees were one long root connected to them. Oh, um, really? Alive, and they are very, very old. You'd say thousands of years. Um, hey, Marley, you are, are you being kept alive by being part of the forest? And do you want to leave the rock? Can't leave yet. My work here isn't finished. And Mona, how many successes on that? One. The Nimbus, then? Yeah. Merlin's Nimbus is the sands of the hourglass running out, but then refilling. So Mer- Merly, Merly, like short for Merlin. That is one of the names that you can call me. I won't say no. <laughs> so you drove... The time ship. Well, you, I don't know what else you would have called it. The Ouroboros, the time, the, oh, um, Ethel's grandma called it something. I mean, Merle does look very confused. The Kairos machine. You kids with all your language. It's always so fun. Are we currently in the missing puzzle piece of in the Fae? You are actually like in the nook where the Fae meets the missing puzzle piece. This cave is like the one side of the V part on the figure eight. This figure eight symbol, this symbol. So it seems to be the symbol of the time sh- ship, the- It is, yeah, you would know that. You've been hunting it. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. A snake that feeds into itself. Yes, I have seen this snake. Very well. Merle, we need your assistance to power the ship, or at least instruct us on how to do it. Oh, yes. How do you power the thingamajig? Well, it's, uh, you've done it. It's all charged up. You've really juiced it this time. I wouldn't stay here much longer. How did we charge it? You see, the ship is powered by adventure, and the more time you spend in the Fae, the more adventures you've had. The more adventures you've had, the more energy you've gained, the stronger, well, the more full the ship, if that's what you're calling it, the Kairos, Chiron. So you know about the ship, so you know how it... Well, I'm just telling you what you want to hear. It is a ship to you then? Yes. Then that's what it is, of course, good Hannah. How do you know my name? I know everything. I'm Merle. I live in the cave. This cave, welcome to my home. So why does it seem like the fabric of reality around here is cracking? I've been trying to warn you about this for some time, actually. You see, where you've been running, you've been leaving behind these cracks into another reality, a realm that is like our realm, but different. They look over at Hunt the Storm, and then they look at Sinjata, and then they look back at Parallax and say, different. And different is not always good. I know, I like different quite a bit, but not this time. And that's why, that's why I think you've really got a good chance. You've really got your heads on straight, and you've got good arms and legs. You can take up the blade and fight back against the corruption. Is this related to Sanjata's perception of these different, the different ways this has gone? No, this doesn't make sense to Sanjata. Most of the stuff that happens doesn't make sense to Sanjata and he just goes with it. That is what it was like before for him as well though. He was an Acanthus mage actually, so he's kind of used to just going with the flow. Cool. Merle, you say you have some time left here. 
How much time do you have left to spend here? How much work do you have left to do? Oh, the usual amount. The usual amount. And when should we come back for you? Oh, well, as often as you can. But I, I do think that you must get going. There's about to be an incident. When and where? Well, those aren't quite the right questions to ask. It's about to be. There's about to be one, you see. Why? Well, because of you. Oh, great. You're just one domino and a string of dominoes, and I can watch them all from here falling down over and over again, but sometimes one domino knocks down three or none at all, and the path simply stops or diverges and splits, and they look at parallax. Dominoes is a dangerous game. Very dangerous, says Merle. Last you said there was a sword we had, we could use. What's this sword? The sword is your will. You must wield it against not just the one that you know of, but all of these threats to our reality that seep in through the edges, through the spaces in the machine. Very well, ancient mage. And where did the bear go? I say that out loud. Where did that giant bear go? The bear is with you still. Okay. Well, any words of wisdom you would share with us before we leave, Merle? Yes. Yes, indeed. There's another mentor who seeks you out. I sometimes get to talk with him when I'm lucky, but he has sunken deep into the hole which you must bring the sword to. No. He's been there, working in all of our best interests, and like myself, has learned much. You see, perhaps this is the most important thing that I can tell you. Sometimes when you understand time, there is a value to not moving at all. There are some perspectives that you can only see by standing still for a great while. Uh, would this mentor you speak of happen to be a man I've met before? Oh, yes. Just all before, even if you don't remember it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure I remember it. And I'm sure I know exactly what hole you're talking about. But this has been a rather informative. Yes. Oh, and you seem to have also learned the lesson about metaphor. Stay away from those Dark holes. Ooh, no, we don't like holes. We're going to use swords on them. Yeah, I got I got this one. I pull out my sword. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. You uh you've acquired something recently here. A crystal. That's right. These things are particularly dangerous. You feel that it gives you strength. But while you hold it, you have opened a door or to the power that you wield will attract power in kind. Oh, lovely. Well, if you were to give it to someone else, they would not reach the same level of power as you and you would not be in as much danger. Finally, yeah, I can see that it's not the only shiny rock that your group has acquired, you should know that just as our friend Parallax is imperiling themselves by, hmm, maybe it's simpler if I, if I just show you. Hannah, if you would mind giving me that stone and just placing it on the floor there in front of you. Will you give it back? Of course! I'm Merle! All right. Uh, swear it with an oath. I swear that I, Merle, will certainly return the stone to Hannah. This time. Intact. Intact. Was that a true swear, like an oath? Uh, yes, it was an oath. Okay. Okay. Hannah reaches into their chest, right? That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Hands intentionally going into skin and pulls out their stone. All right. Uh, you lose a dot of life magic. Do you have any experience points? Three. With three experience points, I'm going to say... 
that if you'd like to, you can spend those three experience points and gain a dot of life magic. You mean without the crystal? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So your life goes to five. And as this happens, you all feel the rush of power. And with fate magic, you can tell that Merlin is sort of bestowing something. It's not a spell, but it's a thing. It's definitely some sort of fate ability upon Hannah. And uh, essentially what it is, is it's two experience points, which you then use to increase your life magic. So Merlin Mm -hmm. has given you energy from their very essence, essentially. Right. Oh, my bones. I don't know how to thank you for this. Oh, you can thank me by being careful and filling in some holes. Now, if you pick up the stone again, it will still make you stronger. Very strong. Dangerously strong. The sort of strength that will be noticed by more. There's a lot of people who like holes who think there should be more holes in the machine. And we don't want them to hear that you've been filling in holes. They wouldn't like it very much. Cats are just fighting. But if we're stronger, we can fill in those holes more effectively and maybe more stealthily? No, of course. Strength is a double-edged sword. Be careful how you use it. And remember that your greatest strength is your versatility. Your ingenuity, your creativity, your will and mind. If you were to judge merely on the strength of your connection to your highest self, your pure gnosis, Miss Ermengarde would be the most powerful among you. Which I kind of think that is definitely true. Don't mistake strength for power. Power is multifaceted. One of your greatest strengths is your trust in each other. This moment would only have been possible with the unconditional trust and love that each of you placed into Parallax, knowing that he very well might be infected with an abyssal strain. You still gave your very life force to him. And if you had not done so, all would have been lost again. You mean like right now? When we did a lot of thorough investigation into what was happening. What? Never mind. Thorough? What? Oh, dear. Well, I I think it's time you be off. Before you go, though, if one of you wouldn't mind, just my nose, this side. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) sure. Yeah, I'll scratch your nose for you, Merle. It's like, all right. You are all standing back in the modularium. You've teleported, not just through space or time, but through all of reality. There was a moment where you could try to counter the spell, Mona. Happens. I check to see how charged the ship is. 100%. All right, we figured out how to charge the ship. That's great. Yeah, but for the reference, it has 100,000 mana if you ever needed mana. Nice. Powered by story, my adventure. Is it? Also, essence. I need essence. It is not essence, but Hannah is a spirit mage. How much spirit do you have these days? Four. So I did pick up the life. I I was going to bring that up. No, I did, but I put it in one of my pockets. I haven't decided if I'm going to put it in my chest yet. Okay. In my pocket. No, wait, I'm not wearing clothes. But someone has all your clothes. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I want to say thank you for picking up my clothes. Yeah, I have them. I'll give them back to you, Hannah. Look, I put them on at some point. They're still in my pocket. So you can give essence to people. I believe that you could give essence to our friend here. What is that called? Channel essence? Channel essence. So you need to channel it out of something, but there's sleeping spirits here. As long as you didn't do it too often in any one location on the time ship, should be refuelable as well. We could do that later, maybe away from the time. But I do need essence. It feeds my I don't think I pull it from the pattern. I don't I can pull it directly from a spirit. Yeah, it's I don't not have to reach. Yeah. So this is just pulling from the pattern. So I can do that if you want some essence. Right, this so- need essence, like we need gnosis, because you're not saying. 
I'm kind of still excited. Like, yes, I will give you some essence. <laughs> there are also ways for you to regain essence, aren't there? Yeah, I have my own. Yeah, there's ways. Sure. You gotta go out into the, the world a little bit. All right. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, team, you've made it back to the ship. The group is all together. Time is passing normally. You don't know how much time has passed, but you do know you feel a sort of calm. There's like a, well, now we're here. We've got some leeway to like, just take a breath. The last time we were here, people were fighting to get in. Yeah, but they couldn't. Do you want to go check if they're still here now? I just want to. I want to peek and see how much time has passed, if I can tell from looking. As you are there. We have sensors on the ship that can tell us. A floating purple cat octopus arrives and seems to want to bond with Ethel as it extends a tentacle towards your forehead. What do you want out of my brain? Inside the ship? or I know it's inside the ship. It's uh, And also... You should know that while you have like a visceral reaction to this weird cat thing, everybody else just kind of is like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's our ship's like AI system. This is not a creature of the abomination, the abyss. Mm, it's like the spirit of like a helper for the ship. It's like spirit of the first mate of the ship. Was that, was that, do you have first mates? I, I think, I understand that. I whisper over to the octopus creature. Know this creature. If you hurt my friends, I will consume you. And now, I don't trust watery creatures. That's a creature of the worm. That's all. But yeah, um, yeah, it's still floating by Ethel, trying to connect if you would let it. Or not. No, I'll push my bangs out of my, or like, kind of bangsy wispies out of the way and let it. Attach my forehead. Yeah. yeah. Attaches to your forehead and you see that it is communicating to you that you can use your matter magic to make the walls of the ship transparent and see outside without opening the doors. Can I do that right now? Yep. It's matter yeah. plus gnosis. I could add um, a yantra. It's still only two. But you can still make the wall see through. It's a little bit blurry and you don't see any fireballs being hurled at you. It is nighttime outside. The trees look like they are, the snow is mostly melted. Looks like it could be springtime, you would estimate. Uh, those of you with dots in, I guess it would be survival, would know it was springtime. So that's Hannah. There are people visible, but because of the two successes on the matter spell, it's a little bit too blurry for you to accurately make out who they are. But this is like the middle of the woods. There's no good reason for two rando people to be here in the middle of the woods at night in 1692, presumably. I want to see in the dark. Yep. Uh, yeah, roll a, uh, a wits plus composure check. I'll spend an essence gain, you know, paint my eyes so that they can see. Yeah, roll wits composure as well. And that, that's with like animal night vision? Yes. Three? Yeah, with your three successes, you still, like, it's the surface of the ship is still between you and the outside world. It's just mostly transparent. So it's still distorted and you can't make out specific features, but you can tell that they are dressed as uh, European settlers, men. And you can also tell that at least one of them seems to have a musket. And uh, if you, yeah, you would be able to tell they aren't your, they aren't your men. They aren't people from the Dawnlands. These are the invaders who have taken over this land. There are two colonists. colonists. Ethel, you feel as you are casting this spell through the ship that you can kind of like feel the entire skin of the ship. With your matter magic, it's like it's all one piece and you are connected to it. Connected in the same feeling as touching the Cosmographicum, or? Similar but different. The Cosmographicum kind of like overwhelmed your reality, but this one comfortably exists inside of it, as if you had just gained another layer of skin. Huh. Like the time ship is also kind of like your body. And you've been turning your body into kind of like dead flesh a lot recently, so you're a little disassociated from your physical form. And honestly, time ship body could be your body if you wanted it to be. I don't know if I'm ready to go that level of like robot yet. 
just slough off this skin suit. My meat prison. But yeah, you, you have a second skin, and that second skin is the entirety of the time ship. And you can feel all the different locations that it's at. You can feel the hum and thrum as some of the locations are in places where people are. Several of the parts of the time ship, the other places that you can exit, are in places that are not being guarded by two colonists. Some of them are quiet, and some of them are centers of society. One of them seems to be particularly buzzing at the moment. And yeah, you're all you're all safe. You're all happy. You can take actions. Um, is Abigail telling us about what she's sensing? Yeah, I'll let you guys know. Victoria, you do sense that there's activity in some places along the ship. There's other places where there are no people. So here's some options on the table as we move into another session. Would you want to investigate the activity parts of the ship? Would you want to get out someplace where there aren't any people and go back to the Dawnlands? Would you want to stay on the ship and investigate some stuff here on the ship? Because there's a lot of mysteries that you haven't really dived into. What's the general consensus, fools? Well, here's what I would like, or what hunts the storm wants, is go back to the Dawnlands. So that's where they're from. And talk to the, the Dawnlands and try to convince them to come on the ship. Or whoever wants to come. But for, but also, in the meantime, investigate the insides of the ship, you know, as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, so that it's safe. And then we got to go to the mega time well. Do you just say you want to go to the mega timelines? Yes. That's also where I have to rescue my people. I have people trapped in the mega timeline. I need to rescue them. That's my goal. But I think we'll need a better control of the ship to do that. I would like to start with just... Possibly getting some people from the Dawnlands onto the ship who could help, who could help out. Yeah. Oh, and before we get too far off, uh, experience is everybody gets experience. Yeah. And just a full point of experience at that because of so many things happening. But then you also gain beats for your aspirations and obsessions. Yeah. So one of my aspirations was leave the Fae. So I've done it. I get a beat. So my. Aspirations were understand the, and lose fear of the ship. Yep. I think that you have certainly done that from your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Let you tell me what if I met these aspirations. Gain insight from the Fey world. That could yep. Be. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Find out how things then, work. Yes. Convince new strangers to become allies. We're going to have to take a vote. How <laughs> cool are you all? Are you allies yet? Or uh, are you hesitant? Mona was pretty strong, yes. Now that I know he wants to take the time shift into the Nega timeline, I am not sure. That's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. We've got to rescue my people. You know They're what? Trapped in the- uh, I'm going to say take a beat for it, but I'm not convinced that it succeeded. I just also give beats for failure. You tried to do it. That one will stay. I appreciate that rule because... Failure is part of learning, growing. Absolutely. Did I stop being hungry? No, no. Do you want to be an archmaster of life with hunger? I have so many questions for everyone. Rihanna, what, why are your body so torn up, closed, and paralyzed? How can you see the future? I have so many. And I have to get an idea of what everybody looks like. But that's a whole other. Besides Hannah. I didn't get descriptions of Oh, yeah, that's true. Out of game, we do have the pictures of the characters on a lot of the episodes if you go back and check them out. Yes, I have to guess. And I know we'll make some tea and pull up some pota- potato bugs and <laughs> talk it all out. Good old potato bugs. Potato what? They were bug potatoes. Hannah does this okay. thing where they take potatoes... <laughs> Or bugs, and then they turn them into the other one, and then they eat them. They don't I'll taste eat. very good. Uh, <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. I, I mean, think Hannah likes the taste of potato provide. bugs. <laughs> right. Sure. Okay. How strange. I can That's adjust strange. my palate however I want. <laughs> True. <laughs> I can eat anything, really. It's great. I still legs. Anyone else aspirations or obsessions before we wrap it on up? We didn't get rid of the tattooed man. He's just still... No. Missing in the fae is what I heard. Okay. Stronger in the fae? Missing stronger. The life spell wore off in the fae. Yeah. 
out of game, you should just leave that one for a while, wait until the ship doesn't have any juice in it, and then, you know, just go back to the Fey and rejuice by finding that the Frogman now has a frog kingdom, is a Fey god of frogs. Could be great. Fey god. Frog king. Frog king. Wow. It's been so nice gaming with you all. I'll see you in the future sauce. Night, everyone. Night.